According to sales figures, everyone in the country's got a Little Britain DVD. It's like they're being issued by the government. But it's not the only comedy series available on Shiny Disc. Here's three I'd recommend which you might not be aware of. First, 15 Stories High, Sean Locke's surreal, understated council estate sitcom, which aired a few years back on BBC's 2 and 3, if you could find it. Oi! That plaster come off you? Yeah. We'll eat it. Criminally overlooked and extremely funny, this is well worth grabbing on DVD. Next up, US sitcom Arrested Development, which charts the woes of the frankly deserving of misery Bluth family. It's just been cancelled in the States, but it's still available on disc, at least until the powers that be snatch up every copy and catapult them into the sun. I'll mail that letter. Job had not mailed the letter, but in an act of defiance, dramatically hurled the letter into the sea. Sharp, quick and often bloody silly. Oh, it's a peach! Finally, US sketch comedy Mr. Show, which hasn't even been shown over here and is only available on import. An unashamed tribute to Monty Python, it stars Bob Odenkirk and David Cross in a series of wacky in a good way sketches, which vary in quality, but when they hit, they hit. Now, Ryan, my students, questions, queries, quests. Uh, Mr. Dorn, I'm a dramatic director student here at the Institute. I heard you plan to go to France soon. My question is... Who dares question Ryan Dorn? If you want to see it, you'll have to order it Region 1 from America, because no one's bothered to broadcast it this side of the pond, the c***ts! We've had game shows based on pretty much any subject you can think of. We've had game shows based on bingo. Look at the number on your middle line that you like best. Game shows based on roulette. Wheel And we've had game shows based on the Wicker Man. <laughs> But never have we seen a game show based on the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics until now. Obviously, I'm talking about deal or no deal, the astoundingly pointless afternoon quiz in which contestants agonise over what might or might not be inside a series of sealed red boxes. But there is a belief here that there's a large sum of money in box number one. Just like Schrodinger's potentially dead cat, the contents of each box exist in a sort of theoretical superposition that fluctuates between pittance and fortune until the box is actually opened, uh, at which point reality assigns it a value in the physical world and the audience either goes, Hooray! or Hooray! In other words, basically, it's just a guessing game. Not that you'd ever guess that, given the way that host Noel Edmonds carries on. We're going to keep the 100,000 and the 50,000 until the very end. All right, Sam, so if you just stick with that strategy for us. There is no strategy here. OK, maybe a bit, deciding when to quit. Uh, but the only one with a clear game plan here is Noel himself. He's like a man in a drama workshop who's been asked to improvise the part of a fevered id flipping a series of coins. We don't want heads. This next one mustn't be heads. I don't want to see heads. Mustn't see heads. Mustn't see heads. Please, open box nine. 50 pages. Yes! It's tails! Thank God! Thank God! Thank God! OK, OK. Next coin. Open Don't want to see heads. Please. Don't want to see heads. Don't want to see heads. Oh, no! Oh, God! I'm going to kill myself! I'm going to kill myself and I'm going to kill you! Even though the game really only exists inside Noel's head, he continually ratchets up the tension throughout and he pretty much gets away with it. Yes, I do like this situation. Watch her face really closely. Risk management. I think we've got to brace ourselves here. Hello. That's yes. an old talking to the banker really who's not really there. Anyway, even though it doesn't actually exist, Deal or No Deal has been exported around the world, most recently to the USA. The American version is a bit more gung-ho than ours, uh, we get a bearded DJ opening suitcases in a pokey Bristol studio, and they get this. We get this. They get this. We get this. They get this. <laughs> Big guy even gets to speak to the bank on a cordless phone. Hello. Not like the vintage bake like bullshit that Noel has to use. Hello, is that the 1930s? Yes, uh, could you, could you stop the uh, Second World War happening, please? That was a setback. That was a serious setback. At the end of the day, Deal or No Deal has a lot in common with 24. They both feature continuous, suspenseful music, phone conversations with shadowy individuals, and they're both great big illusions. 
Deal or No Deal is in many ways a show that isn't really there. When you watch it, you're simply staring into a void. The deep, dark, unforgiving void. Nicky Campbell was born in Edinburgh in 1961. After studying history at Aberdeen University, Campbell gained his first position in the media as a jingle writer for Scotland's North Sound Radio. Eventually rising to present the breakfast show, he moved to London and joined Capital Radio. It was 1986, the year of the Challenger disaster and the Chernobyl meltdown. Yet despite this carnage, Campbell's career went from strength to strength. Within a year, he joined BBC Radio and broadcast to an entire nation. There he stayed for a full decade, until 1997, when he unexpectedly moved to Five Live, where he remains to this day. But radio isn't the only side to this former Scottish baby's bull. In his capacity as a TV presenter, Campbell has worked on Wheel of Fortune, Newsnight, and Top of the Pops. He currently hosts Watchdog. Campbell is also a keen runner, and in the year 2000 ran the London Marathon in aid of a landmine charity. His time, three hours and 20 minutes. So what next for the Scottish broadcaster? Only one person truly knows. Campbell himself. Now here's Dr. Ben Goldacre looking at some bad science. The problem with science on television is there isn't actually any science on television. They've got all these things which they claim are science documentaries, but they're too scared to put any actual science in them. In the case of Horizon, they're horror stories about how we're all going to die. Meanwhile, on Channel 4, they're running some kind of freak show. The baby with two heads, the twin that gave birth to itself. I honestly wonder why they don't just go back to the 18th century and start charging people tuppence to poke at the freaks through the bars of their cage. Meanwhile, they've got these people with sort of correspondence course PhDs from non-accredited colleges in in America. When was the last time that you heard somebody talking about chlorophyll or photosynthesis on national television? You wouldn't get it in a science show, but with Gillian McKeith saying you should eat lots of dark green leaves because that will really oxygenate your blood, you get it at 8 o'clock prime time television. Chlorophyll in chloroplasts only makes oxygen if it's in sunlight. There's no sunlight in your gut. The only way that spinach is going to make oxygen in your bowel is if you stick a torchlight up your ass, And even then, you don't have gills in your bowel. I mean, it's just preposterous fantasy. And she struts about in a white coat in a laboratory next to racks of electronic equipment as if she knows what she's talking about. The thing about alternative medicine, the evidence as it was called, is that the tone throughout is, I'm a scientist. I was a sceptic when I started out, and now my mind has completely been swayed. There was one bit where somebody is apparently having open-heart surgery with acupuncture alone for anaesthetic. If you really pay attention to the programme very carefully, you can just about work out that the patient has had huge amounts of local anaesthetic and lots of pre-medication before they have this open-heart surgery. But everybody I spoke to came away thinking that what they'd seen was somebody having open-heart surgery with acupuncture as if this was amazing proof of the extraordinary efficacy. I just don't buy that. Even in the advert breaks, you get flaky science. You get things like, you know, the Sillit Bang ad, where they say it gets rid of lime scale, which is calcium carbonate, and we can prove that by chucking a lump of calcium metal into a dish of Sillit Bang. You chuck a lump of calcium metal into a dish of water, and it will do that. Any metal from the group on the periodic table that calcium's in is going to do that if you chuck it in water. What I want to see for science on telly is a proper show that says here's an interesting new idea and here's the evidence for and against because that's what science is all about if they can't give me here's an idea and here's the evidence then I'm just not interested 